This video will cover an introduction to economic geography, which forms a key part of the geography syllabus. We'll first begin with looking at the structure of the economy and first uh, dive into the different sectors of the economy. When we talk about the primary sector, we talk about um, these four basic activities, farming, fishing, forestry, and mining. Easy way to remember them is triple FM, the extraction and sale of raw materials and natural resources is the definition of the primary sector. SA's economy, South Africa's economy, depends heavily on the primary sector. Then if we go into the secondary sector, this deals with the processing and manufacturing industries. Primary raw materials are changed into new products, manufacturing of clothing, manufacturing of cars, manufacturing of chemicals, usually involves some sort of a factory or warehouse. Then if we look at the tertiary sector, it provides services and human skills as a commodity, looks at education, police, transport, banking, financial services, and retail also form part of this sector. Then if we look at the quaternary sector, the most advanced sector, it includes intellectual services and skills as well as computers and IT. Then if we go to um, the contributions of the different economic sectors to the South African economy, we'll first look at GDP, which is obviously gross domestic product, the total value of all goods and services produced in a country within one year, including foreign investment. Obviously, that is contrasted slightly by GNP, which is gross national product. And the only difference there is that it does not include your foreign investment. It is all the economic activities that take place within the country. When we look at the primary sector and its contribution to South Africa's economy, we look at agriculture first. 19% of South African population um, depend directly or indirectly on agriculture for employment and income. Agriculture remains the largest employment sector. However, huge backlogs in subsistence farming means it contributes little to the GDP. Then when we look at fishing, a large industry in South Africa, 28,000 people are employed by the fishing sector. Forestry uses about 1% of South Africa's land and contributes 1% to the GDP annually, employs around 170,000 people. When we look at mining, South Africa has rich mineral res uh, reserves, employs around 52, five, sorry, 527,000 people and contributes um, about 1% to the gross domestic product. Gold has fallen from its position as the main contributor of mineral sales. Then when we look at developing countries, more involved in um, the primary sector, whereas uh, developed countries are more employed in the tertiary and quaternary sector. Then if we go into the secondary sector and its contribution, diversified manufacturing base of our economy has made effective global competition possible. It stimulates the growth of other activities Manufacturing helps a country to achieve outcomes such as employment and economic empowerment. Manufacturing accelerates the country's growth and development. It's the fourth largest employment sector in South Africa. Contributes plus minus 16% to the GDP, second largest contributor to the economy. Then when you look at the tertiary sector, human skills and services are a growing part of our economy. Seven million people work in this sector. The sector contributes about plus minus 60% to the gross domestic product. Obviously, that is our biggest contributor. Then if we look at the quaternary sector, um, grown considerably since the invention of computers and electronic services, no official numbers of employment uh, contributes around 11% to the GDP. Then we look at the percentage of the economy in, and how it's divided into the primary, secondary, quaternary and uh, tertiary sectors, primary is 12%, secondary is 21%, quaternary and tertiary make up 67%. Um, over recent years, the primary sector has decreased and the tertiary and quaternary sector has increased. Then when we look at specifically um, agriculture, contribution of agriculture to the economy, agriculture forms part of the primary sector of the economy. Agriculture deals with growing of crops or um, rearing of animals. Agriculture's contribute to GDP has seen, um, has seen a steady decline. Um, agricultural production has not decreased, but other sectors of the economy have increased their contribution to the GDP. Um, 
Skill levels have increased. Agriculture contributes indirectly to the economy in the following ways. It promotes growth in other sectors as it provides raw materials. It promotes growth in the transport sector by using transportation. Employs large numbers of South Africans exports and, um, and provides income for the economy. Then we look at the role of small scale and large scale farming, which form a key part of the agricultural section. South Africa is a developing country with small scale subsistence farming being dominant and largely unprofitable. Commercial farming makes up the bulk of large scale farming and contributes more to the economy. Commercial farming can also be carried out on a small scale. That's an important point to note. Um, if we look at small scale agriculture on a subsistence level, production of crops and livestock on a small piece of land without the use of vast um, technology, particularly common in homeland areas during apartheid, farming output is low and normally only enough to feed one family, intensive labor and limited access to services such as water and transport, it does not contribute much to the GDP, um, because of the poor land on which to farm as well as the lack of skill that we still face. Then if we look at small scale agriculture on a commercial level, intensive farming on small pieces of land, farmers have access to finances which afford them the necessary infrastructure to carry out this type of farming. Small pieces of land produce high yields and high income levels. Often found in rural urban fringe, um, Perishable foods such as vegetables and chickens are farmed in these areas. Uh, they're more sustainable than large farms. Um, however, some of the challenges that they face is that they lack government support. And if their output decreases, so their income also decreases. Then we look at large scale farmers in particular, predominantly commercial in nature. Machinery is used and very few laborers are required. Large-scale farming contributes most to the GDP. Commercial farming has led to job loss in rural areas due to the use of machinery. Examples of large-scale farming include wheat farming, cattle and maize farming. Lack of government subsidies and aid means that South Africa cannot compete internationally with large-scale farming. Then if we look at our main agricultural products, the three main products, field crops, horticulture such as food and fruit and animal products. Crop production and horticulture occurs on the uh, wetter eastern part of the country, whereas animal farming occurs on the drier western part of the country. 80% of agricultural land is extensive farming. 50% um, is given is um, taken by livestock, 25% by crop production, 25% by horticulture. So you can see that livestock is the most popular and most um, farmed sort of commodity. And if we look at agricultural products for the home market, maize is the largest crop grown in South Africa. It's used for human food source and animal feed. Wheat is grown in the Western Cape because of its winter rainfall. Important for bread production and staple diet for poverty stricken areas within the country. Other crops grown in South Africa, barley used in beer, ground nuts, soya beans, sugar, fruit and vegetables. We look at livestock, 80% of farming is livestock. Livestock is often reared with crops uh, in a process called mixed farming. So that's where farmers grow crops and livestock at the same time. Then we look at cattle farming, which takes place countrywide and in low rainfall areas used for dairy and meat. Sheep and goats are reared for milk, cheese uh, and their coats, specifically in the Karoo area. Poultry farming, which is chicken farming, accounts um, occurs within the rural urban fringes. You'll often see those um, long sort of buildings that almost look like hot houses within rural urban fringes. Those are most likely your um, poultry farming. And if we look at pig farming, occurs predominantly in KZN. Then our main products that we export, agricultural exports have increased over the years. South Africa is a net food exporter. It's important to note the challenges that this could face, especially in a time like this where we, are, where we need our food um, quite a lot. Some of the crops that we export, citrus, sugar, grapes, maize, fruit juice, apples and pears. Um, some other important uh, export products, avocados, hides and skins, meat, alcohol and sugar. A number of high growth 
uh, niche food markets are emerging, specifically maybe in the seafood sector, for example. Factors that promote and hinder agriculture in South Africa, promoting agriculture. Obviously, our climate, a temperate climate, allows for a wide variety of crops to be grown. The East Coast has a moderate climate and high rainfall due to the warmer Gullis current. This allows subtropical plants to thrive along the KZN coast, such as your bananas and mangoes. High rainfall areas um, aids in sugarcane farming. Additionally, many large rivers run on the eastern side of South Africa, and thus there is an abundance of water. When looking at the west side of South Africa, there is less rainfall, large cattle and sheep farming, which are supplied by borehole water, a lot of windmills used in that. Then the southwestern Cape, uh, winter rainfall, thus contributes to grape farming and wheat farming. Southern Cape, high rainfall all year round. Uh, natural forests occur with valuable wood types. Then if we look at our soils, soils in the east of the country are relatively acidic, good for shrubs and trees to be grown. Eastern side of the plateau, um, temperate grasslands are well suited to the farming of livestock. Ownership of land. Um, commercial farming is very productive as the land is privately owned and there are no communal choices. The farmer can also make profit and reinvest in the farm and therefore can afford pesticides, irrigation, etc. They also practice good farming such as rotational grazing and contour plowing. Then if we look at trade, since 1999 South Africa has had to deal with the EU um, for the fact that the EU does not impose import duties on South African products. This makes uh, South African products attractive. China has also become a major trade partner during the Northern Hemisphere's winter, South Africa's agricultural products are important because it is obviously our summer season and where we get um, the best sort of return on our agricultural products. Then factors that hinder agriculture in South Africa, um, obviously our climate, lower rainfall in the country due to three high pressure cells, um, obviously your South uh, Atlantic anticyclone, your Kalahari high pressure and your South Indian anticyclone which affects subsistence farming as they cannot afford dams and boreholes. Height of the plateau together with low and erratic rainfall make farming hard. Uh, lack of cloud cover results in hot days and cold nights due to lost terrestrial radiation. Uh, frost is also common in the higher lying areas. Cold Benguela current flows along the west coast, leads to low rainfall and desert areas which make farming hard although the Orange River um, make some farming possible. Then if we look at the soils in terms of hindering agriculture, the west of the country is very alkaline and few crops can be grown. In former homelands, the soil has been overused and become infertile um, due to that overgrazing and erosion. Land ownership in poorer areas, a land tenure system is in place. And the land is small and soil becomes infertile. If you look at it from a commercial farming point of view, commercial farms are at risk as they are often divided into subdivided unproductive units. If you look at trade as a hindrance, during the 1980s the government subsidies decreased drastically and forced farmers to change crops or abandon farms. Um, in terms of just listing the factors, look at poverty, 7% of our land is arable, which is actually a very small percentage. Uh, soils are easily eroded and we con uh, constantly experience droughts in a lot of the a lot a lot of the country that concludes the video on um, an introduction to economic geography as well as focusing on agriculture thank you